has just completed a new trails map. I have brought some of those maps and they're on the table in the back. And if you go through here, um, it actually shows all the, the trails that we have in the city of Lincoln. And then when you turn it over to the other side, it also shows the trails that are in Wilderness Park, as well as some of the other trails that go out into the county uh, and other locations. So it's a, it's a great resource for you to have. Uh, this map can also be found on the GPTN website, which is gptn.org. One of the new things that they did with the map was they actually colored uh, and assigned a color to each one of the major trails in town. And we are in the process of putting together a new sign, uh, signage project that we will coordinate the colors of the signs with the colors on the map so that when you're going out on the trails, you'll know which trail you're on. We know that we have a few locations throughout the trails that it's pretty easy to get lost because I do it myself. And so we're going to put some directional arrows as well as some of the, like the new Billy Wolf Trail, which is the, formerly the Antelope Valley Trail downtown. Uh, we're now calling the Billy Wolf Trail all the way from Devaney out to 91st and Highway 2. You go underneath the bridges, you don't know where you're at. We're going to be trying to identify which uh, street you're going underneath and give you a little bit better bearing. Uh, so that's one of the projects that is moving forward. The signs just came in this week, so it'll take a while to get them out. Probably later on this fall, we'll start working on that project. So uh, the, what we have up on the screen right now are actually the trails that are in the city of Lincoln. You can see on the map, the green ones are the trails that have been completed. The yellow are the on-street routes, and then the red are the future trails that will be developed. Uh, we've been really successful with completing a lot of the trails that we have within the city uh, in the current development and we're working forward on getting that or working uh, in the future on getting the, the red trails completed. Uh, the, this was in the new comp plan, the L, uh, L plan 2040 and it identifies kind of the plans that we felt, uh, the trails that we could complete within the next 20 or 30 years and then on out after that. I think we have maybe 85 new trails, 85 miles of new trails identified on this map uh, to actually complete the trails that, uh, the trails network. Whether we get all those done in the next 30 years, I would say we're probably about half that based on the funds that are available. Um, and what I thought I'd go over are some of the recently completed projects so you're aware of what's been done, some of the current projects going on, and some of the future projects. Uh, some of the recently completed projects, again, the Antelope Valley uh, Trail was recently done. Uh, we made a connection to the Antelope Valley Trail. We'll talk about that. We did a little bit of restoration on the Billy Wolf Trail from 56 to 58. What we're finding out with our trails, if you've been on the Rock Island or the Mopac, they're only eight feet wide in the majority of the places. That's really too narrow for the usage that they're getting and for safety reasons. So we're trying to, as we rebuild those trails and replace them, we're going to make them 10 or 12 feet wide. The Jane Snyder Trail Center was recently completed. That's located at 21st and N Street. Uh, great location. It's already been used several times for trail-related projects. Uh, the, the comp plan we talked about, and then David Carey is going to talk a little bit about the pedestrian and bicycle strategic capital plan that's been completed. Uh, when the Antelope Valley Trails were under construction, the project Antelope Valley Trails really stopped right around J Street. So if you recall, they rebuilt the J Street Bridge, and when they did that, we had them design it so we could get the trail underneath. We brought it up to about Randolph, and we actually, the trail as it goes along Capitol Parkway is on the south side, west side of the channel. We built a new bridge just east of Randolph to get you over to the east side of the channel so you have a smooth connection on the whole trails network. Once you get to Randolph and cross it, you do not have to cross any more streets until you get all the way down to Devaney. Uh, this is the J Street underpass going, uh, this is actually north of the Randolph. Uh, intersection. Okay. New improvement, the Billy Wolf, 56 to 58th Street. When, when this trail was built, there was this mindset that you could just add a four-foot sidewalk next to an existing four-foot sidewalk and make it work. Well, it works for a while until the grass starts to grow and then it starts to separate and then you have problems. And so we replaced that section of trail. We do know that we have a couple other places in the trails network like that that will eventually get those replaced as well. The Jane Snyder Trail Center, named after the former city councilman, Jane Snyder, 
a uh, great facility, the Great Plains Trails Network donated huge sums of money to build the public space for that complex. There's also a real retail component of it and then the community health endowment is up on second floor. Uh, it will seat somewhere around 80, 90, 100 people, depends on, on the layout of that facility. But that's in the heart of uh, Union Plaza as well as where many of our trails come together. And you can actually start a trail ride at that location and ride any one of the four quadrants around town and really not have to repeat riding any of the other trails. So it's a great facility. <clears throat> Here a year ago, we partnered with the Lower Platte South NRD on the Billy Wolf Trail by the zoo. Uh, the, the trail, we were having problems with it. The NRD was looking for uh, some other, some additional ways to, uh, for some additional f uh, flood storage during uh, high rains. And so we had kind of suggested, well, if you want to do that, let's lower the trail, put it down in the channel like that. Uh, it gets, a, it provides us some pretty good separation between the trail users and the children's zoo. Uh, we had some ADA issues, as you remember going down A Street underneath the bridge, it was pretty steep, especially in the winter time. Uh, this has alle alleviated those problems. We now have an ADA ramp at A Street as well as at 27th Street. Some of the current projects we have going on, uh, the Jamaica North Trail from A to Calvert. Uh, we had completed the Jamaica North Trail several years ago and the Jamaica North Trail connects with the Homestead which now goes all the way down to Beatrice. Uh, we're trying to make this final connection from A to Calvert and we're kind of dealing with the railroad right now on trying to get across Park Boulevard, but once we get the agreement in place, we'll make that final connection. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the slide. Cabot Connector is another one we're working on. Dallin by uh, Cabot Elementary School. The Tierra, Tierra Williamsburg Trail stops at San Mateo Drive. We're gonna connect from San Mateo down to Yankee Hill. Uh, there's an underpass there that as development continues on south, the trail will continue in that direction. The Bison Trail Bridge, uh, which was closed a couple years ago for safety reasons, we're going to replace that. Uh, we have a multi-use path that's being constructed on 1st Street and then one on 14th and then we talked a little bit about the trail signage. So the Jamaica North Trail, this is the one that actually will connect with the arena trail that will be constructed when they, new, when they do the new road along the west side of the Haymarket. And that, the arena trail will get you down to about N Street. We're going to make another connection from N to J. And once we get this piece done from Calvert up to A Street, you can start at the arena and ride all the way down to Beatrice. It's, it's just going to be a great trail to, to ride on. Uh, this one again shows the uh, Cabot Connector Trail, which goes over on the left side. It's not a large connection but it is a valuable connection that there's a trail along Yankee Hill right now from 27th to 40th. We'll make that connection and again it will continue on south and if you take a look at the map, the green line on there gets you all the way down to the south beltway eventually. Bison Bridge was closed a couple years ago for safety concerns and it wasn't so much of an, a person being on it with their bike, it was more of a concern that when somebody was on it the, the bridge would collapse. We actually have funding lined up, again, with a lot of donations from the community and from the Great Plains Trails Network. We're just waiting on the environmental document for approval, and once that's done, we're going to go out uh, to bid uh, to remove that bridge and then put a new 10-foot wide pedestrian bridge over that creek channel. Public Works is improving First Street from just north of Cornhusker up to Superior. And as they do that, they're adding a multi-use path uh, along that street, which is great. We've been looking for a way to make a connection between Sir Superior Street and Cornhusker for many years. That will uh, now be completed yet this fall. The next project you probably heard about is the roundabout at 14th and Superior. And uh, as they improve that intersection, they are doing some underpasses. Uh, that will, you will not have to cross Superior Street uh, on the bike trail or, uh, well, the Superior Street trail, will, you will not have to cross that grade, nor will you have to cross uh, to, to use the 14th Street trail. But the 14th Street trail will get you all the way up to Humphrey, 
which is just short of Alba Road, and you can see up on that map, we've actually got a green line going through the neighborhood where we'll make a final connection up to Alba Road. Kind of the interesting thing about that is that once that trail's done, the piece along 14th will be done this fall. Stone Bridge, which we're calling that little section going through the residential area, will take a couple, three years because that's federally funded, but once that's done, you'll be able to make a connection all the way over to Fallbrook. There's a trail that currently is along Alvo Road that connects the uh, Coosier Elementary with, what's the other school up there? Coosier Elementary is up at 14th to Sco Middle School. There you go. Okay, next one. And that's the new roundabout, which uh, um, is soon to be open, I think, yet within the next couple months, I think that whole project will be done. Uh, the trail signage we've talked a little bit about, you will not miss these signs once they're up on the trail, let me tell you. The signs, these say they're maybe 11 by 14, the signs are actually going to be 18 by 24, so you will definitely see them. Some of the future trail projects uh, that we're moving forward with, Stonebridge, we just talked about that, that's up at Alvo Road. Pioneers Park trails, if you've ever been in Pioneers Park and ridden their trails, it is horrible. I mean, you will ride on the streets before you ride on those trails. So we've got some funding to start doing that. We're replacing the bike bridge in Wilderness Park, which is between Piners and Old Cheney. Uh, we're, we've got some area lights, some solar powered lights that we're going to be placing around that new bridge we put in at Randolph. In streets, the protected bikeway, I think David's going to talk about that. Public Works will be rebuilding Old Cheney from 70th to 84th. We need to get a trail along that piece. And then Public Works is also doing some street improvements on 56 south of Highway 2 and Old Cheney. And they're going to be building a trail along a portion of that that will make a final connection someday down to Yankee Hill. This shows that Stonebridge Trail going through the neighborhood up around 14th and Alvo Road. And again, making a connection with the school elementary. Um, it's not SCO. Cooser Elementary. Okay. A uh, picture of the Pioneers Park Trail that we're renovating. Uh, the piece that we're going to do, it's actually done, when we did the Bison Trail, they made a connection up to the circle. We're going to begin from the circle and go to the Sled Run and Pinewood Bowl as the phase one. We'll have to do two more phases to get to the west end of the park. And um, this one was kind of critical because we have a lot of weddings at the Columns and folks park at the parking lot up by the sled ramp. And it's very difficult to get folks down to the columns just because of the, some of the ADA issues with that portion of the trail. This is the bridge as it stands now. That will be removed and a new one will be replaced there once we get funding lined up. We're working on that right now. Uh, the, some of the downtown projects resurfacing, which a lot of that's done now. There's still some more work to do, but this is going to greatly improve the downtown area as well as that end street, 11th and 14th, that's been talked about for cycle tracks or protected bikeways. Old Cheney, uh, you can get on Old Cheney at about 14th and ride all the way out to 70th. This was the last piece of that connection that we needed to get you all the way out to 84th. And so in 84th, when Old Cheney is improved, there will be a trail along that section of, of the street. Next year is that project, and this is the 56th Street that they're doing. We will go through, if you know where London Road is, it's south of the Trade Center down there. We'll, they're going to go underneath. There's a bridge that goes over Beale Slough. We'll go underneath that bridge, and that trail will eventually get you down to Yankee Hill. And again, that trail will get you down to um, the South Beltway someday. Again, that's what the map looks like. We'll continue to try to build these little pieces out as we move forward and get funding identified. This is really, we have about a 15-year plan, 20-year plan laid out for these trails. Uh, we're hoping that the funding remains in place. The, uh, if you heard in the paper or, or read in the paper or heard in the news media that the enhancement funds, there are some issues about that and, and, and I think those details are going to be, we'll know a little bit more this week, unfortunately. Uh, <clears throat> before there was a dedicated funding for trail projects, now it sounds like those funds are going to be turned over to the Department of Roads. They will determine how much of those funds will be used for trail projects, and so we'll just have to work through, you know, the, the Department of Roads when they find out how much money they have available and how much they're going to allocate for trail projects. 
I think that's all I have for my presentation. Do you have any questions on the trails in town or if you've been out riding, if you have concerns or issues about them? Yes. I don't think that's going to move forward. I think instead what they're talking about now is possibly closing down part of Highway 2 to take care of the increased number of people in that event. So they'll just reroute it somewhere else? No, I think they'll still, re they'll still maintain that route, but it might be that they'll be up on the highway for a portion of it if they close a, a lane down. But I don't think those details have been worked out yet. But uh, for sure, that portion of the trail will not be rebuilt. Anything else? Thanks. Good morning still. Um, uh, my name is David Carey. I'm with the planning department, uh, Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Department, and I am a uh, long range planner and a transportation planner. So the, the joke always is you can blame it all on me, uh, but then I distribute the blame after that. Uh, the, uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is going to be uh, kind of piggybacking on what Terry has to say. He's got a lot of the, uh, the projects that he's in charge of or involved in anyways with Public Works for the, the build out of the bicycle system. And on my side of things, I work a lot with the kind of the coming up with ideas and then getting them approved in plans and then they become projects after that. So I have a few very uh, exciting uh, plans and concepts that um, we want to talk to you about today. And um, if uh, we go to the next slide, the the Downtown Master Plan is a document and a plan that was adopted and approved and went through a process for approval about seven years ago. And what I want to show in these first few slides, and you can just kind of run through these, uh, so many of these projects have happened in the last seven years um, in our downtown in the West Hay Market in the Antelope Valley uh, area. Um, and part of the reason is that we have a very good plan and, and more like a uh, a strategy to try to get these products to happen and to identify them and to say that they're a good idea and then try to get the funding for them or to get the private sector to buy into uh, developing a property and things like that. So this is really uh, the, the, the downtown master plan and the uh, recent attempt and now approval of the, an update to that plan uh, is very important on a planning side and then in an imp implementation side of things. Because if you didn't have the ideas put down somewhere and organized, then it's harder to get a lot of these projects to happen. But all of these projects identified in the pictures and the arrows have all happened in the last seven years in downtown. And that is really a testament to this community and really getting really proactive about development in general and then especially in our downtown. Uh, and a lot of these have happened during a recession, obviously, too, which is even more impressive, in my opinion. Um, the downtown master plan was adopted back on July 9th, so this is a very timely presentation and discussion. Uh, what it looked at, it didn't redo the entire downtown master plan. What it looked at was uh, P Street uh, very specifically as the retail hub of downtown, uh, as well as the concept of complete streets. And by complete streets, I mean the idea is to have uh, a network of streets that accommodate all users, not just automobiles and not just pedestrians and not just bicyclists and not just transit, but all of them at the same time. And that doesn't mean that every single street in our downtown would be a complete street, but there would be a network so that you could get through the downtown and, and, and exist in the downtown if you were a biker or a pedestrian or an automobile driver or a transit user. So that is the concept. And so we move forward with looking at that in particular. And within that discussion, what we really looked at uh, specifically was the concept that was in the, um, the 2005 downtown master plan of M and N Street being uh, kind of a, a one-way pair in each direction uh, to have uh, a lot of different uh, amenities on it, in particular bike lanes. Uh, we also looked at 11th and 14th Street as compared to Centennial Mall for the idea of having more pedestrian and bicycle amenities on those facilities. And then uh, the, the, the new concept of protected bikeway that Terry mentioned in his presentation, uh, but that, that is now adopted into our downtown master plan and that we are going to be moving forward with our first protected bikeway, and I'll explain what that is in the next few slides. So on this map, what we have is uh, basically an explanation of what really uh, has been an, uh, updated in the downtown master plan. And what you see, uh, what we call the retail T and identified in the dark red um, is along P Street and then using the uh, north and south one block of 14th Street. 
as being identified as really the retail core. And then within that area, the concepts that have been now uh, refined more is the idea that we need to make that as pedestrian friendly and inviting as possible so that people want to be there, they want to shop there, they want to hang out there. So that's one major thing that was updated in the downtown master plan. Another idea is the darker uh, brownish line is the 14th Street promenade, identified as 14th Street. Uh, we're highlighting that there but also on 11th Street and on N Street and then up on R Street, an idea of having some other streets that are very uh, pedestrian friendly, places that you want to be, and to really spruce up the area for downtown to be more competitive in general. And then another major idea, uh, concept that was discussed and now adopted is the N Street protected bikeway. Uh, and that actually runs all the way from on the east over to, from the Antelope Valley Trail system that is now constructed and, underway and, and available for use all the way over to what's identified in the red line, dash line, as the future trail that's going to be built with the West Haymarket Arena projects that Terry alluded to. So the idea here is that N Street is that connection. It's that last mile to get people from these major trail facilities that either are built or already are underway and being constructed and getting through and in and out of the downtown in a safe and convenient fashion. So that's the, the basic concept of the protected bikeway and getting a facility through the downtown. And N Street ident was identified as the obvious um, choice for doing that. So real quick on the retail tee, we can go to the next slide. Um, really it's just to identify that the, the old plan identified some other areas along P Street, but we're really focusing on from 11th Street to 14th and then one block north and south of P along 14th as the real focus of the retail core of downtown. And the reason why I want to focus that in is that it's a lot easier to try to really spruce up certain blocks instead of trying to get everything to be tied together in a, in a very uh, long corridor. And so there actually is some funding available through our urban development department that they're going to be proceeding with uh, a redesign of P Street uh, and really focusing in on that, this area that's identified in the dark red actually within the next two to three years. So that's something that's going to be underway. So to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, this is an existing look at P Street where Sam and Louie's Pizza Shop is today. And then the idea is to really spruce this up so that it becomes uh, an area that you want to be at. Um, obviously there's uh, uh, some, some, some advanced pedestrian lighting shown here, some landscaping. What I really want to point out is that the concept is to really clear out the, ped the pedestrian space up along the, the building faces where people would shop um, so that you don't have a lot of clutter out there but then you put your signs and your lighting out along the edge of the curb and then really getting serious about looking at putting some bicycle parking in, in the street and using one space or so you can get a lot of bikes parked out there and it, it gets rid of the clutter on the walkway area that where if bikes were, were parked along in front of the stores or along other lamp posts and things like that, it really opens up and frees up uh, for the pedestrian as well as it makes it look nicer too, besides providing the parking for the bicyclists. So another major concept was the idea of these, the complete streets. And so complete streets are designed and operated so they work for all users, as I said, you know, transit users, walkers, bikers, and automobile drivers. Um, and the idea here is to really link the community together for its different assets. And if there's one place we want to try to do this, it's in our downtown because we do have a lot of different things that we want to try to connect people to, whether it be the university or the state office building or the soon-to-be-developed Civic Plaza along P Street, um, as well, obviously, the, the, there's the Haymarket projects and the Haymarket in general as well as the Antelope Valley area. So there's a lot of different things going on, but we want to make sure that we connect these so that people can get around easily and conveniently. And we want to make sure that people, once they're in downtown, they can walk easily and they want to be there and walking around. Or they can get in and out of the downtown by bike so that it's, that it's, a, it's an easy choice. It's not something that there's obstacles in the way from doing that. So that's really what the concept is for complete streets. And again, it doesn't mean every single street in our downtown is going to have a bike lane on it, but it means that you can get in and out of downtown uh, fairly easily. The old plan in 2005 showed uh, this idea of M and N Street um, shown there on this map. Uh, an idea, of, obviously those are one-way streets, and the idea was to put one-way uh, bike lanes on each of those streets. Uh, there also was a concept of park blocks, and that's identified with the light green along M Street. Uh, the park block idea was, in theory, not a bad idea, but it was really not practical because it would require purchasing a lot of private property to have enough space to have more of a, of, a, of a natural feel along an urban street in your downtown. So what we actually have done is we've dropped the park block idea altogether. Um, and what we've also done is we've merged the bicycle connection concept onto one street, and that being N Street. 
And the concept is to put a protected bikeway on N Street for this whole entire length from Antelope Valley all the way over to the West Haymarket. Um, and so that is really what the focus is now, is to try to get that project to happen. So the reason why we've identified N Street is that it has that continuous nature to it. There's no uh, complications on either end or through this area as far as continuity of the street network. Um, M Street has some discontinuous roads going on each end of what we'd want to try to make a connection for. So really what we have here is a very straight, uh, um, very straightforward, fairly easy um, route to take. You don't have to make any turns uh, and you can go in uh, both directions on one street with a bi-directional bikeway. Uh, we've also identified 14th Street, which has a, currently has the bike lane on it, as well as 11th Street. And the reason why we've identified those, not only are, do they currently have bicycle facilities on them, so the impact would be diminished because you really wouldn't be uh, taking out any more uh, parking or travel lanes uh, than there is today. But also that 14th Street get, is a straight shot from the south neighborhoods uh, past the state capitol and up to the university uh, and through the downtown. And similarly for 11th Street, it gets you all the way through uh, without too much complication. Um, so that, those are the reasons why this network was, was developed. So the idea of a protected bikeway, it is uh, th to actually not be in the street like a bike lane is, like our bike lanes are today. And that doesn't mean that bike lanes are bad. It just means that this is a type of facility where you are going to attract more users, more uh, average riders of bicycles instead of more of the hardcore that are more comfortable out in the street with traffic or in a bike lane. What it does is it takes the, the, the bicycle use area off of the street, normally buffered by curbside parking, so that you're not riding your bike along moving traffic. When you get to the intersection, you end up having to cross the intersection more in the area of traffic, but you also have identified markings on the street that identify that this is where bicycles will be, will be crossing. It also separates activity from the sidewalk for the pedestrians, which is a, was a big deal in downtown as well so that you have your dedicated areas for pedestrians, for bicyclists, and then for moving traffic. And it's designed in a way so that it's comfortable for more users to be able to, to do it. This is another example of a protected bikeway, obviously much more urban uh, in this setting. Uh, but what this does is that it, it identifies the fact that we do have to design into this on N Street. We have a lot of signalized intersections. We have to design into it uh, how the signals will work. We wanna make sure it's very clear who can cross through an intersection and who cannot at certain points in time. So there probably is going to be some bicycle signalization involved in this project. This is just a typical kind of generic uh, design of what N Street would look like. We would maintain two, two lanes of traffic. Um, we did a traffic study during this process to make sure that the volume of traffic on N Street could handle losing one lane of traffic and it can. Out to the year 2030, even with arena traffic and other activities going on during the rush hour, really none of these intersections really are impacted by losing a lane of traffic. Um, the only intersections that do have a problem uh, at, at a certain times of day and during the peak periods is at 9th Street and 10th Street, and that's more because of volumes on 9th and 10th Street, not really on N Street. Uh, this is a, just a, a sketch of what it would look like on N Street. So what you have is you have your two lanes of traffic. You'd have par angle parking on the north side. You'd have parallel parking on the south side. And then you'd have your 10 foot wide, effectively kind of like a trail almost, but, but up behind the curb, separated from traffic. And then you'd have the regular sidewalk on top of that. So this is the, 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 this, the concept. We still have to design it. We still have to make sure that it all works as far as the intersections are concerned. But uh, this is approved into the plan now. This is another example of getting into kind of how P Street could be redesigned, but also 14th Street. This is P Street and 14th looking north. And what this would look like in the future if we uh, move forward with that project. That would, this would be the 14th Street bikeway project would be a secondary project behind N Street. N Street would go first. But the idea here is to kind of show how you could uh, d design this into the existing cross section and not lose any lanes of traffic uh, and trying to retain as much on street parking as possible for, on all these blocks. So uh, that is the, the downtown master plan concept. I would uh, like to point out that there is funding for the N Street protected bikeway project through our urban development department as well, as well as the, the, the streets that have been designed as part of the West Haymarket have been designed to incorporate this concept basically west of 9th Street. Um, so there's uh, basically the plans are already underway to get this fully designed uh, and there is funding available for it to happen. So the idea is to have it uh, actually constructed by the end of 2013. So that is kind of where we're at with things with N Street. 
Other plans that are in the works, uh, there's been a lot of discussion and work done in the, um, the, the near south uh, neighborhood areas around the capital. Um, uh, Greening of America's Capital is an EPA grant was obtained by the city. Uh, a lot of good work was done uh, over this past winter to come up with concepts, a lot of different concepts, but one of the major ideas that came out of it was a streetscaping of 11th Street. It's a very wide street if you've, if you've ridden on it or driven on it. Um, and there's a lot of space that can be used uh, better because there's not a lot of traffic on it. So the idea here, and, and what I'm going to highlight here, is that the concept is to move forward with a uh, bike lanes in each direction on 11th Street for about a half a mile, from C Street up to about Lincoln Mall. Um, so that's a, it's an exciting project that's in, a, in, a, in the design stage right now. Um, and that does also have some funding behind it. So um, assuming we can come up with a good design, it will actually happen. And then finally, Terry alluded to this uh, briefly in his presentation, but we are finalizing a uh, bicycle and pedestrian capital plan. And what I mean by that is we've gone through a process coming out of, we have a new 2040 comprehensive plan and long range transportation plan, which is basically a long term plan for looking at the world of transportation. And we didn't quite get to the level of detail for pedestrian and bicyclists that we wanted to uh, by the time we had to have it approved back in December of last year. So we've taken the last few months to really get into the pedestrian and bicycle side of things. And a lot of these other concepts that we've talked about today in projects were part of that. Uh, but what we have is finally we have uh, a draft and we have an opportunity to go to the public probably in September to talk about all the different concepts that are in more detail laid out in that plan. Um, and really what we've identified is a lot of projects that we'd want to do or should do, both on the pedestrian side and the bicycle side, that we really don't have enough funding to do that all uh, over the next 25 years or so. Um, so we really need to work on prioritizing the projects and making sure that we know we're doing the right thing with the limited money that we do have and trying to get more money in general to do more of the projects. So this is a draft uh, map just to get your ideas around all these concepts. And it's really building off of the existing trails maps that have been, been used and Terry used and, and alluded to as well. Uh, and to identify things like uh, additional possible trail connections in the future that aren't currently in the plan, but also to identify things shown in purple here of uh, uh, additional share rows or shared lane facilities on existing streets where you'd go out and put some additional markings on the street to identify that this is a street that is good for bikers to get from point A to point B and that have drivers be more aware of bicyclists being around. Uh, it also is identifying um, the the uh, the um, uh, protected bikeway projects that have just been approved in the downtown master plan that we didn't have that approved but <coughs> when we uh, approved the long range plan uh, and really just to bring it all together to make sure that we have a lot of information in one document in one place so we can use it as a planning document and prioritization document also to point out that on this uh, map of the uh, the yellowish brown lines are existing uh, and future um, bike routes and we really went through this process and identified that we have a lot of good streets we have a lot of a grid system in a lot of areas of the city a lot of good residential local streets that are good for biking and actually get you to places and we're really going to start emphasizing that and get more signing out there and more information about these connections because that is really a, a place that you can bike fairly easily and it doesn't you know you don't have to be along zooming traffic that's going 40 miles an hour this is another map where we got into the details of looking at intersections that need some pedestrian countdown timers as well as identifying some critical sidewalk connections that need to happen and try to uh, emphasize getting funding for them. Um, so we have gotten into the pedestrian, pedestrian side of things to make sure that the crosswalks and, and uh, intersections are signalized uh, the best as possible. <laughs> And then finally, just to give you an example of other topics that we're talking about related to bicyclists, we are looking at, specifically in the downtown, areas where we have public parking facilities, garages in particular, where we have an opportunity to, whether they're going to be built new in the next few years or they're going to, they could be retrofitted with unused space for bicycle parking. It's very important that we uh, make it the easy choice, as I said earlier, to, if you want to bike into and out of downtown, whether you work there or come for an event or you're, you're a student at the university, you got to have parking available for your bike. Um, and some, sometimes it's okay to just put it on the street in an in a inverted U temporary parking, but it's also nice to have an option to have secure parking in uh, covered areas like a parking garage. So we're looking at opportunities for that and try to get some of those projects done too. So I went through that really fast. Um, so uh, are there any questions about all those different things that are going on? Great. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.
Well, thank you for staying awake so far for the last guy. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Mike Heil. I'm a public health educator here with the Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. My area of expertise, advice, consulting with the department is in the area of physical activity and nutrition. And about 10 years ago when I came on with the department, that was about the same time David was coming on with planning. Terry had been with Park and Rec for quite a while. And we started meeting monthly as part of the Mayor's Pedestrian Bicycle Advisory Committee. And we started finding out that the three different departments had a lot of things that were overlapping. There were lots of things that we had in common that we needed to share. And over the last 10 years, we've developed this working relationship where I don't think there's a single department in the city of Lincoln that doesn't know what the other groups are doing. So public works, park and rec, urban development, planning, uh, the health department, <clears throat> we're all very good at sharing information and supporting each other because we found out through experience that basically there's five E's we have to address. One is evaluation. If we're not measuring outcomes of what happens, car crashes, pedestrian and bicycle counts, uh, miles of trails, miles of streets, miles of sidewalk, we don't have the answers to a lot of questions. We have to have good engineering. Uh, you've already seen from both David and Terry what they're doing. Uh, we didn't get anybody from uh, Public Works to come and talk today, uh, but they also have a big impact with this, with the city streets and with the sidewalks that they maintain. Uh, there's enforcement. LPD, believe it or not, does tag bicyclists. They do write tickets. Uh, they do, but they also follow up with crashes. Uh, when bicycle and cars and bicyclists and pedestrians and pedestrian and cars have accidents, LPD tracks those things. Uh, but they also write tickets, and so enforcement's covered. Uh, there's also um, encouragement, which is something I think that we all do a lot. We count on you to do it with your work sites, encouraging your employees to be out, be physically active, to use the trail system, to use the sidewalks, to use the streets, to use the parks, uh, to use all the recreational facilities we have. And for a city this size, Lincoln has well over 100 different facilities. Those aren't just parks and trails. Those are pi privately held uh, exercise centers, dojos, dance studios, gyms, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but then the other part that we have is education. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit and then a little bit more about the encouragement as well. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, Lincoln's bicycle education program first. Smart cycling is the national curriculum that has been developed by the League of American Bicyclists for bicycle education. It is a set of curricula that is designed to work with children through adults in both classroom and on street, on trail, on sidewalk bicycle activities. Uh, there's a series of five different levels of classes. Uh, you have to go through a fairly extensive training program to get, uh, receive what's called league certified instructor status. Uh, we have 23 people here in town now that are league certified instructors. It took us the better part of a year, uh, but we've slowly accumulated this number of folks that can do uh, these trainings. We've already done them a couple of times at um, schools. Uh, we've done uh, one at Southeast Community College. We've done several at UNL through Campus Rec. Uh, we've done one through the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, which is primarily for seniors. Uh, Prescott Elementary was a nice pilot school for us for our education efforts. Uh, but we want to make those classes available to work sites, to schools, to churches. Um, we'll be doing it at Park and Rec Centers. The Jane Snyder Center will be a huge magnet site for us for those bicycle education classes. And they will come with fees. Uh, we'll be some classes, if we can do them for kids, we'd like to not charge for kids' classes. We figure that eliminates a barrier. Um, how many of you learned how to bike ride? Your first bicycle ride was in a city of 250,000 people. Any show of hands? I didn't think so. The city I grew up in was only 75,000 people when I first got on my bike many, many decades ago. Uh, Parents now are hesitant to teach their kids how to ride a bike because they're not comfortable, they're not confident in their own bicycling abilities in a city this size. And so being able to offer those children's classes, I think is very important to getting kids 
first on the sidewalks in the neighborhood and then as they start to go to school or to other places, getting them out on the streets so they can comfortably ride. And we have plenty of streets that children can ride safely in. Uh, the traffic volume uh, of the cars is low enough, the streets are wide enough. Uh, if we can just educate the kids about bike safety, we can cut them loose and go from there. But we also have a lot of adults that haven't been on bikes in years, and they would start riding more if they only knew how to ride in city traffic. And that's where we have the adult classes. And we're figuring I'm probably charging anywhere from $15 to $25 per person for the classes. That money goes to cover what is about an eight hour class, four hours in the classroom, four hours actually out doing bicycle skills. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with just a community ride, getting people out in their neighborhoods where the classes are offered so they're confident and comfortable riding in the streets that they're at and go from there. We have a lot of bicycle promotions going on. Uh, I've tried to list a few of them here, uh, starting with the oldest one. Trail Trek has uh, been celebrated for 10 years now. Uh, about a decade ago, the gentleman that was the then publisher of the Lincoln Journal Star had all this experience with bicycle events at other communities he had been in with the newspapers, and he wanted Lincoln to have something like that. So he approached the Great Plains Trails Network, he approached Park and Rec, he approached the health department, he approached the local bike shops and said, I don't want a race, I just want an event. I want a celebration of the trails. And so Trail Trek started the first couple years with about 800, 900 people. Uh, the idea of the Trail Trek event is to move the event around each year to different parts of the trail system. So people will get exposed to parts of the trail that they normally don't ride because it's not in the neighborhood or it's not on the way to their work or to their place of play or worship or whatever, for whatever reason they're riding. Uh, this is the 10th year. This year we had just over 1,500 people participate in four different levels of rides from 10 miles to 40 miles. And we asked the people just to show up and ride. We had lots of families. Uh, it's a half day event. It generally occurs the last Sunday of May. Uh, and the plans are already in process to make next year even bigger, shooting for about 2,000 participants in Trail Trek. Bitacular has been an event that's been sponsored by the Near South Neighborhood, the Everett Neighborhood, McPhee and uh, Everett Elementary Schools to try and get their neighborhoods the families just to get out and introduce them to biking. And so there's a bike rodeo, there's lots of health events that go on. But the nice thing and unique thing about Bitacular is it is paired with a race. The Capital City Criterium is a professional bicycle race. And they have the chance for people in the neighborhoods to come and watch professional bicyclists race on the streets in and around the capital area. The Mayor's Bike to Ride, uh, Bike to Work Day uh, has been going on for about four years now. The first year we did it just as a public employee event. We did it just for city employees. The mayor had fun, got to talking with some other businesses in the downtown area. Second year we invited just downtown businesses. Uh, this was our fourth year this last spring. It's generally, we do our Mayor's Bike to Work Ride the Friday before Bike to Work Week, which is generally the second full week of May. Uh, but this year we had uh, about 650 people sign up and ride either to their and from their work sites or with the mayor's ride on that day, the Friday leading into the National Bike to Work Week event. Streets Alive, this is the second year we'll be doing Streets Alive. It's scheduled for Sunday, September 9th. Originally designed to be a physical activity promotion just to get people out and move so they understand that walking and bicycling is the easy choice uh, to get them out of the cars. Uh, we worked uh, with the Community Health Endowment to get 3.1 miles of city streets closed. And then people were allowed to rollerblade, walk, bike, push baby strollers on those streets. Uh, we had different events along the route. People could stop and get health information, healthy food, visit with vendors. Uh, this year it's set for Sunday, September 9th. Instead of being the south central part of the city, this time we're going to kind of move to the central to north central part. Uh, and more information can, is just starting to come out from the Community Health Endowment about that. This is a unique event. It's free, but we also shut down city streets to do it. And we had over 3,500 people come out last year and participate in the first ever event like that in Lincoln. National Bike to School Day was rolled out this year. Uh, the City of Lincoln worked with both Prescott and Maxey Elementary Schools to introduce the concept to schools in Lincoln. Uh, normally those schools have anywhere between 15 to maybe 30 kids bike on an average day to school. On that day we had over 150 kids bicycling to school and that wasn't counting the parents that rode their bikes to or from school with their children that day to participate as well. 
Uh, the principals of both Prescott and Maxie were very impressed that that many families were interested in bicycling and they're looking now at expanding their bike capacity and coming up with bike routes recommending for the kids to come to and from school. Uh, the newest one is the bike friendly community, bike friendly business. Now the bike friendly community, bike friendly business designation from the League of American Bicyclists has gone on for years. But this was uh, Lincoln's crowning moment. Uh, after seven years of trying to get designated as a bike friendly community, this year Lincoln earned bronze level status. There's four levels you can get, honorable mention, bronze, silver, gold. One or two communities are starting to push the platinum uh, uh, level and there, there, there's talk about making a fifth category platinum for the really, really unique bicycling communities. But after seven years of trying, focusing on those five E's, Lincoln finally made uh, the bronze level this year. Um, we also, for the first time, had four businesses that were recognized as bike friendly businesses. Uh, Pepe's Bistro up in Northeast Lincoln, Union Bank, at all their branches, not just one, received an honorable mention. Pepe has got a silver. Uh, Cycle Works, Moose's Tooth got a silver, and uh, UNL Campus Rec also got a silver. So this was a really big bike year for recognition for the city that way. Uh, the bicycle friendly community opportunity happens once a year. Bicycle friendly business op, uh, is open twice a year. You have to have an application submitted either in January or June of each year. So we'll be approaching a few more work well companies this next six months trying to get you to make an application because we feel there's probably closer to about 12 to 15 companies in Lincoln that can qualify. Uh, Omaha for comparison has 12 companies that are bike friendly business. Uh, but a lot of theirs are small, small businesses, uh, single owner proprietorships and things like that. We feel like we've probably got 12 bona fide businesses that would qualify and hopefully get recognition next year. The last event I want to talk about is Get Up and Ride. This is currently ongoing. This is the first ever national bike competition between cities and between states. Endomondo uh, is a computer programming company out of Europe. They've partnered with the League of American Bicyclists, Kimberly Clark, Clark Corporation, and Trek Bicycles. It's a four month competition where people keep track using the Endomondo application on their smartphone or on a GPS or even on their desk computer. You can log in your miles. But from May 1st through August 31st, your uh, cities encourage companies and teams to be formed uh, to track miles in this competition. It's free, it's open to anyone who lives in the US. Uh, we have a lot more teams entered than we have companies. Companies can only enter one time, but since teams are limited to 10 people or less, we have lots of companies that have multiple teams within their company. Um, Lincoln's done very well with this one. As of this morning, uh, since May 1st, we are now out of over 670 cities in the country, second in the nation as far as bicycling. We have well over 700 people in the city who have recorded at least one bike ride on their system since May 1st. Uh, we're ahead of biking meccas like Portland, Oregon, Madison, Wisconsin, the Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Uh, cities that have a lot more education, a longer history of, uh, of education, uh, who have a bigger trail systems, who have bike lanes, and here we are, Lincoln, second in the nation. Uh, so we're very, very, very proud of this effort. You still have the opportunity to sign up, even though the event is just over halfway done now, you can still sign up either as an individual and have your miles tracked towards Lincoln's total, or for your company, or if you still want to form a team, you can form a team and go there. And the endomondo.com uh, campaign national website is where you want to go for more information. Little incentive, they're giving away four high-tech bicycles, dozens of bicycle helmets, uh, a couple trips to uh, wine country, Napa Valley, California, uh, at the end in August, and uh, you still have lots of time to accumulate miles and go from there. Any questions about our education component or our encouragement component that we currently have going? Yes, ma'am. What is a bike-friendly business? A bike-friendly business, there are criteria that have been set up by the League of American Bicyclists as far as what a business does to encourage people to bicycle to work. Now, it doesn't have to be bicycling every day. 
uh, but they do look at the environment. Has the, has the business created some bike parking? Um, is there policies that encourage bicycling? Uh, do you, have you provided some education? Um, one of the work well companies, uh, Lycor, actually has an internal web page where they list uh, routes to get from different parts of town to Lycor. Uh, they have a listing of other people at Lycor that bike to work if you want to partner with them. Teledyne ISCO makes a big effort to, to promote bicycling. Um, Lincoln Industries supports bicycle races. Uh, there are some companies that are exploring the tax incentives of encouraging people to bike. There are tax incentives for people who want to commute by car, uh, but they're now just finding out there also are tax incentives for people who want to commute by bicycle. And you can get a reduction in your pre-tax uh, pre paychecks by setting up these, these type of programs. So there's a list of about seven, maybe eight different things that a business has to be doing or in the process of doing. Uh, there's a checklist at the League of American Bicyclists website. Um, and you can go there and they'll have a little checklist to see where you think you might be at. Uh, a lot of companies can qualify real easy for the honorable mention. But if you've gone so far as to make locker rooms available, indoor bike parking available, uh, you've got policies that encourage or uh, reimburse bicyclists, your company can get recognition and go from there. Nice part too is once you've received some of those recognitions, you can also turn around and apply for grants for up to $10,000 to improve your bicycling uh, environment at your company. If you're interested in making an application, you can contact any one of our offices. We'll walk you through it. Any other questions? On behalf of Terry, David, and I, thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions about bicycling in general, please don't hesitate to contact any of us. Thank you. Thank you.